Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. So this is a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a while and it's directly related to the public charging infrastructure and where I think we can focus our efforts to get the greatest return um, right on the amount of money and time that, and resources that we commit to building a public charging infrastructure. There are three key, what I would consider cornerstones of an effective public charging infrastructure. And I wanna talk about each one of them individually and go into a little bit more detail and why I think they're so crucial and why I feel that those three types of implementations uh, would be the most effective. And really, if we were to do these three things, the public charging infrastructure would be effective enough to support really a 100% conversion to electric vehicles for daily personal transportation. Of course, that assumes that they're scaled appropriately. Now, the first one that I wanted to discuss is grocery stores. Now, this might seem like a specific implementation, but I think it's very wide reaching. And in fact, of the three, I think it's the most important. And I'll explain why. Before I do, though, I did want to mention Electrify America. And I think what they're doing is actually quite smart by targeting Walmart uh, with these six or so chargers per location, they're doing exactly what, what I was envisioning for these grocery store locations. So a lot of people in cities or metropolitan areas might not realize this, but in rural America, a lot of Americans do their grocery shopping at Walmart. It's convenient. They, they have a full grocery at most of their stores. They're nearby freeways. You can get other things while you're there, but it's a convenient one stop to go grocery shopping. A lot of Americans in rural America use Walmart as a grocery store. So even though I don't think that was necessarily Electrify America's intent, they sort of inadvertently in one of their first build outs are doing exactly what I I feel needs to happen is this focus on grocery stores. Here are the numbers behind why I feel like grocery stores need to be our number one target right now for DC fast charger implementations. The average American goes to the grocery store 1.5 times a week and the average American is there for 40 to 45 minutes. That's enough to add a few hundred miles of range. The reason this is important is we're, we're looking for ways to get people in urban areas access to chargers when they can't charge at home or work. Well, if you're going to go to the grocery store anyway, might as well have DC fast chargers there that can provide you with your weekly commute. You're going to spend on average 50 hours per year at a grocery store. Well, you might as well spend that time refueling your vehicle if you have to. And besides which, it saves you the eight hours that you would spend on average at a gas station per year. And that's that's being conservative if your visit to the gas station was only 10 minutes at a time. So installing fast chargers at grocery stores would directly address the issue of providing charging for urban EV owners who don't have charging at home, don't have garage access, don't have charging at work. But then it also addresses a few others. So one of the reasons right now small battery electric vehicles aren't as effective for Americans is a lot of Americans live in rural areas. Providing grocery store DC fast chargers means that when those Americans in rural areas do their grocery shopping, a small battery electric vehicle is now a viable option. When I go up to visit my family, a lot of times I'm driving around 100, 150 miles just to do all of the errands that we do while grocery shopping. I can't do that even in the new leaf. Now, if we had a DC fast charger when we stopped for groceries, I could. So now all of a sudden, all of these vehicles that weren't previously viable for Americans in rural areas become a lot more viable. And then if you live in areas where the weather shifts a lot or you have some really negative uh, winter weather, it also you know, facilitates that. Now during winter, your car is still usable. Your electric vehicle is still usable. 
And then the other aspect of that is traveling. While grocery stores wouldn't be an ideal stop for people who are traveling in their electric vehicles, they're better than some stops. And the services that are available at a grocery store are at least usable for people who are traveling. Uh, bathrooms, uh, food to grab, drinks, things like that. Uh, and, you know, even if there's nobody there at the grocery store, typically an open parking lot, well lit with security. So they make decent or I should say adequate stops for people who are traveling in electric vehicles as well. We have right now about 38,000 grocery stores in, in the country. That, that provides a very dispersed network of chargers. You know, you might ask, well, how many chargers do you need to install at a grocery store for this implementation to make sense? Well, because people go there about 1.5 times a week, you're never really going to see more than, you know, 30% of the population at a grocery store on any given day. And within that population, remember that it's only about 20% of the people who aren't going to be able to have access to charging at home or work. So really, you only need to, to look to maybe make 5% of the parking spaces DC fast charging spaces. You know, if you have a grocery store with an average 100 car parking lot, really six chargers would be more than enough. And when you talk about speeds, well, the speed of these chargers really only needs to be the, the 50 to maybe 150 kilowatt uh, chargers because you're expecting people to spend the full 40 to 45 minutes there. There's no reason to make them necessarily faster than that. And then, of course, they need to make sure that these chargers aren't free because if they're free, people are just going to opportunity charge and the people who really need access aren't going to have it. And it can't be preferred parking because if someone really wants to park in the best parking spot, they're going to park at the EV parking spots regardless of whether they actually need a charge. So those two things also have to be considered. And one of the reasons I would say during this phase it's going to be so important to target grocery stores is they're one of the businesses that doesn't really benefit necessarily from installing fast chargers because they're not in a highly competitive business necessarily. Someone's not going to make their grocery shopping choice between two different chains based on whether one has DC fast charging and the other doesn't. So there's no real competitive advantage. There's no real return on investment for them as a business like there would be, say, for a coffee shop or a, you know, a restaurant along the freeway. And so while we're in this phase where there's still a lot of government funding and we're still using, you know, public funds to build out a fast charging network, it would be ideal to target these locations like grocery stores that are going to have the greatest impact on urban EV owners, on rural EV owners, and EV owners who are traveling uh, long distances. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.